In their natural environments, plants are exposed to a variety of biotic and abiotic stress stimuli. This can be drought, temperature, salinity and changing light conditions, but also interactions with pathogenic as well as symbiotic microbes. Different to controlled laboratory conditions, we should not forget that outside in the field several of these factors hit plants simultaneously. In principle, this is the same for us humans, other animals or insects, but there's a great difference. All these creatures can run away. In contrast, plants can't. They are buried into the ground and therefore sessile. Thus, they needed to evolve refined mechanisms to survive. Hi, I'm Thomas Ott and professor here at the Biocenter of the University of Munich in Germany. In my research team, we're trying to understand how plants respond to environmental stimuli. To study this, we mainly focus on the interaction between plants and microbes, such as bacteria and fungi. One of our main questions is how plants actually dynamically organize their cell surfaces. Let me briefly explain you what this is all about. We can nicely visualize the plasma membrane by expressing fluorescently labeled proteins. You may see already that proteins like the one we used here are often not uniformly distributed at the plasma membrane. But now look and be surprised what happens when we apply specific stress cues to these cells. Within minutes, plant cells can completely reorganize their plasma membrane resident proteins and thus respond to the different triggers. This represents at least one strategy that makes them such successful organisms and enables them to survive in this ever-changing environment. In our current review, published in Trends in Plant Science, Sebastian Konrad, a PhD student in my lab and me, we surveyed different molecular modes that are used by proteins to be specifically targeted into these membrane domains. In the past, we have mostly used either genetic or biochemical approaches to do that, but when we actually realize that a lot of signaling proteins are localized within these microstructures called microdomains, we started focusing on this very aspect. Today, we're using advanced live cell imaging and quantitative image analysis to unravel membrane dynamics during plant microbe interactions. While it is nowadays a well accepted fact that plant cell plasma membranes are actually highly compartmentalized into microdomains, it was only recently that people started asking how proteins can actually be specifically targeted into these structures and how these domains are formed. Some time ago, we realized that a lot of marker proteins that are targeted to these domains are post-translationally modified. So we started working on that aspect. During my PhD, I was involved in the work that showed the diversity of membrane domains in plants and found that several of these membrane marker proteins are as acylated. Over the last years, we intensively discussed within the team and with other researchers how local protein crowding, post-translational modifications and the presence of transmembrane pro proteins influences the structure of these membrane microenvironments. In our recent review, we not only discuss different modes that allow proteins to be specifically targeted to membrane microdomains, but also how these structures can nowadays be visualized using modern microscopy techniques. To illustrate you this, let us show you some of the instruments that we use. This is a state-of-the-art confocal microscope, which certainly is a great tool for live cell imaging. The main difference to a classical epifluorescent microscope is that out-of-focus light is eliminated from the image by a little and adjustable pinhole within this machine. This allows us to only image a single confocal plane rather than collecting all light that is emitted from the specimen. However, Almost all confocal systems have limited resolution in XY as well as the Z axis. This is certainly a big issue when imaging membrane microdomains. This is a so called total internal reflection microscope or short turf microscope. The technology used in turf is different to a confocal system. Here, we adjust the exciting laser light to an angle where all light is reflected at the surface of the specimen. In this situation, a so-called evanescent wave is generated.
that penetrates the sample and excites the fluorescent protein. The great advantage of this technology is that this wave only intrudes the sample by about 120 nanometers. This gives us a much better resolution along the z-axis, even though this system has other limitations, such as the very small field of observation, it is a promising technology to image plasma membrane microdomains. I hope that you got interested in our article. Enjoy reading!